Mobilize, helping to drive the transition towards a smarter, safer, driver, less future... Hey, hey, don't hit that skip button. You know, just because they don't have the buzz like Waymo or them, Mobileye has shipped over 200 million of their IQ system on chip, and automakers have put them on the road. There's a good chance that one of your vehicles has Mobileye inside. Mobileye's founder, Professor Amnon Shashua, has become a thought leader in the space of intelligent driving and autonomy. Back in 2018, he got people thinking about the idea of a level two plus system in between SAE's definition of a level two and three. And today, multiple automakers offer a system like that where you can take your hands off the wheel so long as your system sees that your eyes are on the road. He gave Mobileye's annual presentation at CES again this year and I want to summarize his take on Waymo's strategy versus Tesla and how Mobileye is following a hybrid of the two. Just a reminder, SAE Level 5 is a fully autonomous vehicle that can operate under all conditions, not bounded by a geofenced area and of course without a driver. Waymo is amazing, but it has limitations, making it an SAE Level 4 system. Nobody has a Level 5 system on the road today. They all have limits to their Operational Design Domain, or ODD. To get to Level 5, he plots it on two axes. Precision is the Y-axis. Think of it as safety. It's the effort to minimize interventions by the driver, safety driver, or the tele-assist operator monitoring the autonomous vehicle. Waymo is going up the high safety path. The x-axis he calls recall, but admits that most people will think of it as availability. For example, Tesla's FSD Supervise works just about anywhere. It doesn't limit operation to certain roads or geofenced area. You can FSD through construction zones and pass school buses. Their path is YOLO, put it everywhere, and AI will make it better, hopefully. Tesla is on the high ODD path. From here, I'll let the professor explain. So the first school of thought is, is what Waymo and, and companies like Waymo have been, have been doing. So they, they went on, on a relatively small recall, but very high precision. Small recall means that the system could be very expensive. Small recall means that it's not geographically scalable. That means every new geography, you need to build maps, you need to collect uh, data, so the scalability is, 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 is limited. Uh, could be even, you know, the type of uh, driving, the type of roads could be, uh, could be uh, uh, limited. So that's a limited recall, but very high precision. This is where Waymo is, is, is right now. And, and where Waymo needs to go, it needs now to increase its recall. So to continue on or along the x-axis, in order to reach the holy grail. So this is one school of thought. So the first school of thought is identify a relatively low recall, but go to 100% precision, and then try to increase your, uh, your recall. The second school of thought is what Tesla is, is doing, is optimize recall and figure out precision later. Right? So, um, and, and Tesla, if, if you look at kind of the, the versions, version 11, version 12, version 13, you see a very big expansion of, of recall. They can do much more in version 13 than they did in version 11. But when you look, for example, at the, the, the website FSD Tracker, where people upload their, their MTBFs, the mean time between critical uh, interventions, you see it's more or less flat. Right? It's about five to 10 hours of, uh, of, of MTBF. So, so precision is not yet the optimizing, the optimizing axis, it's the recall, the optimizing axis. And, and the goal of Tesla is now reaching almost 100% recall to start, or 100% availability to start going up the ladder of precision. And there's a question mark whether this is a, a point of discontinuity or this is a smooth transition. What Mobileye is doing? Mobileye is a third kind of school of thought. So on one hand, our supervision goes through a similar trajectory. We have, uh, we have a system in China based on IQ5. It was designed back in 2021. There are 300,000 uh, vehicles in, in China. It's coming out in the West with the Polestar 4, both in Europe and later in 
2025 also in, in, in the US. And the clip that I showed you before, the, the, the clip on the left-hand side was a demonstration of what the system can do out of the box, both in highway and in, in urban. Uh, the recall is slightly less than the recall of the version 13 of uh, Tesla. Uh, and our next generation, what we are all, the entire company is working on with IQ6, coming out next year, 2026, with uh, Porsche and Audi and the entire Volkswagen uh, group, would have a much higher uh, level, of, uh, uh, level of precision, but still not the level of precision that allows you to be eyes off. Right? And, and I'll, in the next few slides, I'll show you what we're doing to, uh, to get there. So this is one hand. On, what we're doing in parallel is a year later introducing a chauffeur. Now chauffeur is an eyes off uh, system. And what, what you're doing here, what we're doing here is sacrificing recall. We're, what, what we're sacrificing in recall, first of all, it's uh, the type of roads. It's going to be on the highways. But on highways, it's going to be a very useful system, 130 kilometers per hour uh, driving, autonomous uh, lane changes, and it's an eyes-off system. Eyes-off system is, is, a big, is a big discontinuity jump because you can do something else in the car. You can work on your smartphone, you can do something, you can do something else, and, and this would be approved in terms of uh, um, what you're allowed to do when, when driving the, uh, the system. And... Uh, this requires a very, very high precision. What we're not sacrificing, we're not sacrificing uh, cost. This is volume production uh, cost. We are uh, not uh, sacrificing geographic scalability. This would be able to drive everywhere on the planet out of the, out of the box using techniques that I'll show you in a moment. And then going into the future after that is gradually increasing the recall just by adding more and more road types. And I'll show you what we're going to do, what we're going to do there. So, so it's a different school of thought. It says that it's not that we take the Supervision 62, which is coming out next year, which is basically camera-based. There, there is, you know, a few radars, uh, but it's, it's, it's a camera-based uh, system. And trying to cramp up, to crank up the, 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 the precision is now we are introducing more sensors, we're introducing a LADAR, we're introducing, we're introducing an imaging uh, uh, radar, so we're introducing more sensor capabilities and more, and, and more compute, and reducing the road type to, uh, to highways in order to reach that very high level of uh, precision, and from there, start moving up, uh, moving right on the x-axis to gradually in, increase the availability of, of the system towards the end of the decade. Right? So, so it's a different uh, school of thought. And, and those two activities are in parallel. The Supervision 62 is led by, uh, led by uh, Porsche, and the Chauffeur 63 with 3RQ6 is led, by, is led by Audi, coming up a few months after the Supervision uh, 62. Final thoughts from me. If you want to see the full video, head on over to Mobilize YouTube site. I'll put a link to it in the notes. He talks about the metrics of mean time between failure, MTBF, or between critical interventions. How many miles or hours of operation before an incident occurs? We should expect autonomous vehicles to do better than humans because much of the data on us meatheads are skewed by driving under the influence and being distracted a machine does not have these problems, so we should expect better. He talks about human drivers being capable of 500,000 miles or tens of thousands of hours between failures. Those are much higher, much safer thresholds than I would have expected. How to measure and what that threshold is will come up when Washington inevitably proposes a federal autonomous vehicle law. He also talked about radar. Mobileye believes that radar, not LIDAR, is the ideal companion to a vision-only system. It's good at things that cameras struggle with, like sun glare and adverse weather condition. Interesting. He also showed examples of their VDAR that generates similar results to LIDAR using only cameras as the sensor input. Cool stuff for Mobileye, lots of partners that they're working with. Hopefully you found this insightful. My brain hurts a little. So until next time, thank you for watching.